So I'm starting my new ammo box project with my lithium polymer batteries. These are about 20 amp hours um, in this tiny little pack. I just got them in and they have these really thin wires coming out. Um, two positives and two negatives on each side. So I just put them all in parallel to make it so I can pull the current I'm uh, wanting to pull. I got it coming through this <coughs> watt meter and I already have the watt meter marked out where it's going in the box. <coughs> I'm going to put the batteries on this side. With my watt meter here. I want to have an inverter in here. I want a pure sine wave but they're really expensive right now so I'm going with a modified just for now. I want to have uh, plugs on the side. Um, lighter plug and maybe a USB or two but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. So let's get to it. Today we are running off solar for this project. So what are we pumping? My batteries are full. <coughs> what are we pulling out of here? 46 amps. All right. So it's uh, not not even 12 o'clock yet in the winter, so we're not uh, pushing full what we could be, but we're still able to keep uh, the voltage of the batteries up with everything in the house running and with this compressor turning on and off, because I'll be using it to cut this metal, this angle grinder. So continuing this project, I got this... Uh, well, one third cut out, and then I had to go. My wife wanted to go somewhere, so I went, and I scored on uh, an inverter for this. I got 600 watts. Um, these probably won't be able to produce 600 watts. Uh, I'll find out anyways. But I got one for that ammo box with the lithium battery. I got another one for the 35 amp hour sealed lead acid in the other ammo box that I already made. And I got these for 30 bucks each, which I find to be a good deal. I've gotten a little bit farther into my project. I added these longer wires, which I soldered to all these here. Just finished soldering these here to each other. Don't know if my solder job is all that great, but I mean, it seems strong. <sighs> Both sides. My trusty soldering gun. Got the hole cut out. Got two sided tape, which I'm using to stick in front of this on with. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we'll find out. Got my cheapy inverter, which actually has a USB on the side, outlets, voltmeter, uh, voltage out, and uh, amps out. Uh, so far, I really like this inverter for 30 bucks. I don't think you can go wrong. And I'll update what you guys want to get further. So now, I have the watt meter. I uh, just uh, put on this two-sided tape, and it's really cold out. So I have this 100-watt light bulb, which actually throws quite a bit of heat. Um, just uh, on it, running off of its own power to warm the unit up to help it uh, stick better. Here's the inverter running off these batteries. It says 11.6 volts. And the meter here on the side, let's see if I can block some of this light here. All right, you guys. There we go. So that's what the meter's saying. So 9.4 amps coming out of the batteries. Holding at around 11.75 volts on the meter, 11.6 on the inverter. This inverter, these batteries are flipped, going sideways, and the inverter is inverter is also going sideways in this box and I gotta rig up still some uh, some lighter plugs or yeah lighter plugs and outlets uh, 110 outlets for the inverter the inverter shows the output power voltage and the load 95 watts to 100 watts it was 100 a second ago so it's probably just under 100 and input voltage I'm gonna leave it like that for a while let's self warm up uh, until I think it's on enough. I soldered these. I have three wires. I have the negative 
and the battery is going to the ne meter negative coming out to the inverter and going to a clamp. I'm seeing with the other side. Start heavily sold soldered it, so uh, these are live. I'm going to figure out uh, a way to clamp them to something in the box. They're only live when I have the batteries on. But I'm going to clamp them to something in the box that is not conductive. And that won't come off uh, while moving the box around. I'm going to figure that out. And yeah, so let's see if we can find something else to plug into the inverter. I know I don't want to plug a 300 watt halogen. I don't think it'll run it. Um, do I have another little something around? Maybe I don't. Well, anyways, I'll have to do a load test on this later when I'm finished. And I'll see what the max wattage I can pull out of this without these uh, boards tripping. That is nice and warm. That is going to help out like crazy. Alright, I'll update you guys as I go. I was impatient and I found something, an extra load to put on it. I forgot I have my soldering iron here, which apparently takes 80 watts. So this is my input voltage, 11.1-ish, 180 watts going out. Let's see what this meter says. This meter says 11.114.8 amps going out. There you go, now you can see it, 163 watts. I'm not sure if that's right. If this says 180 amps, anyways, one of these are out a little bit, but they're close enough for me. I'm gonna run this for a while and see how long it goes and see when this inverter starts complaining about low input voltage. So I know my limit's around 200, 250 watts, 200 watts for a longer period of time. I'm thinking I can do a 200, 300 watts for a short period of time on this little battery bank. Um, but we'll see. So we've got the semi-finished product. I didn't get it completely finished, but it's semi-finished. Made some mistakes like the grinding wheel got away from me here. Unfortunately, so it doesn't look as clean as it could be. I'm gonna see if I can find this paint and touch it up and touch this up a little bit. Make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, Got the little spot for, for my cords to run out. So let's see how it works. So you open it up. Battery's here. Inverter's here. I had to put the inverter on an angle because it's so long. It's actually quite a bit bigger of an inverter than I wanted, but it was cheap. So that's fine. These are live whenever the inverter's live. So I put a nice spot so I can clamp them on without grounding them out anywhere. So I can turn my batteries on. I have to turn five switches on, one for each battery. I'll just put that sticky tape there. It's almost like a little bump stop. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, bubble wrap at the bottom. So that uh, it helps because these are lithium polymer batteries. I just want to help uh, with the um, bumping around and stuff. I got to put something here from the inverter because I don't want the inverter hitting that that corner there. But anyways, this is how it works. I've already drained it a bit. So that's sitting at 12.35 volts. So now these are live. I'm actually going to shut them off to show you something here. So they're all off. Just waiting for the capacity in the inverter to go down. Okay. So if I ever need external power, I just run my cords out like that. And there you go. Now I got external power. This is also where I charge. Oh, here we go. This is the max load this thing can do. Here we go, 25 amps. It's going in and out now because the battery is too drained for this. 25 amps. Anyways, shut that off. I actually ran it a little bit before I started the video and quickly popped the camera out and it started shutting down. So it can do 25 amps for a short period of time. So that's 250 watts approximately, but that's a 300 watt light bulb. 
So I'm sure that's over 30 watts. So anyways, I am happy with this. And this is how I'm charging it here. This is not how I always will be charging it. I'm going to be using an IMAX B6, but I just have this long coil of wire, which has lots of resistance in it, which is perfect for this application. Connects it to my battery bank. My battery bank is being charged by just the one string of panels. The other string is going through the grid tie into the house. And I have it going to here. Ah, this says, here, let's see if I can get back. 12.8 volts, that's a little high, but there is, like if I check the, the voltage on these batteries, uh, it would be more like 12.6 volts, just because there is quite a bit of losses in these lines. It's unfortunately unfortunate that they're so thin, but that's just the way it is. But anyway, that is, it's getting too high now. It's because I, I turned the panels on there. So anyways, this is what the voltage is actually sitting at less than 12.4 i'm gonna shut the panels off here turn them all to grid tie so now that my main battery bank is going lower once that drops down a bit i'll be able to hook that back up to charge and it won't hold the voltage so high because now my main battery bank instead of being almost 15 volts will be under 13 volts so let's see how we're doing now 12.66 approximately it's pulling the battery bank is down to 13.6 volts now so it's a uh, one volt higher so we have a voltage loss in these uh, wires of about a volt I let this charge at one amp on these batteries I let it charge to uh, 12.68 volts because that's approximately 12.6 volts on the batteries um, the higher the amperage I put in, the higher I let this go to because of the loss in these lines, because this will show 12.8 volts, but the batteries are actually 12.6 volts. So it just depends on my current going in. This I'll probably let go to 12 point, I don't know, 12.75 or something like that, where I think it's safe. Uh, it does not show current being charged into the battery through this meter because, um, I'm putting current backwards through it, so this is supposed to be the load side and this is supposed to be the source side. That's what happens when I load, put a load on the battery, but when I charge it, I'm going through the load side, out the source side, so it doesn't show me what I'm putting into it. I would like to get another meter maybe, put it here for the input. But anyways, the, that's how my little system works. Far from complete, I want some outlets on the side and whatnot. But uh, that's what I got so far.